Welcome to the third part of our mini course where we are talking about minimum requirements of knowing JavaScript to start learning React. As React is the most popular library for front-end development, a lot of people, different people, trying to start using this library. So in this course, I will help you to learn minimum requirements from JavaScript to start. In the previous videos, second and first one, we covered a lot of topics about creating variables, creating functions, most popular data types are used in React, such as uh, strings, uh, different types of strings, numbers, objects, arrays. We covered two popular operators, its instruction assignment and the rest parameter and spread syntax. We covered different loops for for, for example, or map. And we covered error handlings. In this video, we will talk about classes. Yes, it's still important part in React. We will talk about forms, how to handle forms, because of the most uh, web front-end development, it's about creating forms, getting some data from user and uh, saving this data somewhere. We will talk about promises and uh, fetch, how we can get some data or send some data to remote server. Okay, and uh, let's start from classes. Okay, we have our application, now we can delete everything and we will start from the fresh, clear, clean page. So we have nothing. Now let's create the first class. So what is a class? To understand the class, we can think about it as an abstraction or the next level of objects in JavaScript, which we covered in the previous topics. For example, let's create the same user object we had. So let me remind you. For example, we had this object, user, and we can console log user, and we will have data in this object, let's inspect console and refresh page. So we will see that we have object user with two fields, its name and age, two properties. Okay, in JavaScript we can create classes, for example, with specific reserved word class, let's call user and the curly brackets. And for example, name, we will create another user. But we need assign value. And uh, the best practices and I guess it's recommendation from JavaScript. Classes we're creating with uh, the first letter is uppercase. The same what we have for components in React. And now we have new object, use, new class, user. It's a class. We can think that it's a blueprint or template. How, it, how the instance should look like. Okay, now we need to create some instance of this class because of we cannot use uh, user directly. For example, if we will try to console log this one, we will see only that it's a class user with a constructor. We will talk about it later, but 
is a great example that, as you see, we created class user and only assigned the new field. It calls field in classes, not property. But JavaScript under the hood rewrited it and created constructor function and assigned this name Oksana. Okay. But we want to see only a name. How to do it? To do it, we need to create instance of this class. For example, with special word new, new user and brackets. Let's try console log this variable. And now, as you see, we have user, we see in console that user is a class name, class name. Inside we have field the name and we have Oxano, for example. The same we can add some age. For example. But as its template is not a good idea to hard code some values. We can pass some value when we create a variable instance. For example, we can pass name and we can pass age. So we need to save this data. How to save this data? To save this data, we will use special method it calls constructor. It's a function with reserved name constructor. This function automatically will be called when we create new instance. To this function, we can pass any parameters. For example, name and uh, let's call it user name and user age. And now inside we have our class, we have this class and if we want to change some field or call some another method, we need to get access to this object, this class and these methods or fields. And to do it we can use specific word this. Now this points points to our object and as you see we have already two fields its age and name so let's use name and we want to assign user name the same for age and now when we will create this object we assign for example When we will create new object, we automatically will call function constructor and uh, to this function we are passing two parameters, the same parameters. Oxana will be in username and we assign it to field name. Let's take a look. So as you see, we have name Oxana age 25 and uh, but all the values are uh, other so we renamed these values and even more we can delete these fields we don't need them they will be automatically created when we will call through this okay we know about method constructor let's create some new method for example Hello. In this method, we only console log. Hello. My name is, and we will call this name. We are using our favorite backticks strings. 
So now we can call some function and okay, we don't need this one. For example, let's delete this part and we can call some method from this instance. We have hello. Let's execute. We see that hello, my name is Oxana. Pretty simple. Okay, let's create another user, a new one. So the user is only my imagination, we can call it as we want. But we need new user and let's pass maximum. And we want to call the same method for another instance. And as you see, we have hello, my name is Oksana and my name is Maxim, what we call from another instance. It's pretty simple how works classes in JavaScript. Okay, let's do something a bit more complex. For example, we have user, but user is a person and we can create another class person and extend this one. For example, let's create person and in this mat in this class we will have method say my name for example its class the same okay and we call this name but for this class we don't have name for now Okay, we have class user. User is some kind of a person. We can have visitors, we can have admin, admins, but all of them are some person. So let's extend, extends class person. So class person, it will be something like parent class. And we can take some methods or fields from this class. For example, so this person speaks JavaScript, language JavaScript. Okay, and when we use user, okay, let's console log. not here first of all we see error that reference error must call super constructor okay when we using parent children class and we extend some other person we need first of all call super function this function it means call constructor of your parent in this case it's person so we will call constructor of this class what it, what will it do as we know automatically it will assign this language value javascript And now we see that we have user Oksana, we have name, age, and also we have language, JavaScript. So for this class we didn't create it, but it was inherited from parent and language. The same with methods. For example, we have say my name in this class, but we don't have it in user. 
when we will create when we created user Oxana, we can call say my name and and we will see that and we will see my name is Oxana. So it as you see when we call this name in class person we didn't have name field but when we called it from user was executed this function say my name but this pointer it was pointing to user class and in this class it found the name that's why we see name Oxano. Okay, one more method we will use to change, for example, language. We will call it set language, for example. We will accept new language. And in this function, we need to just change this. language and now we can change language for example now let's call for user Oxano and for and uh, we need to see this language Let's call this method, for example, render. Okay. Let's call render and now let's change name. Python, for example, and uh, that's it. What we see, we see that we have my name is JavaScript. In case you will call this function again. We will see that my name is Python. Okay, so when we call some set function and we change something, we can see this data. Okay, for example, what will happen if we will try to call this render in person? So in person class, we don't have method render, but we have it in our children. Okay, let's delete this part. So when we try to call some method from our parent class, but we don't have it, it won't work. So it worked with name, but with method it doesn't work. but we can do it with uh, children class for example we have render and we can try call this say my name and now when we change language we can try call user render what we will see So as you see, we have my language is Python, but we didn't call mm, not set language. We need to say my name. And as you see, we have when we call render, we automatically almost we output my language and we output my name. This function was called from parent class. Okay.
So how do we use it, this knowledge of classes in React? In React, we had component up creative with a function, but we usually in the old versions of React we used classes class up and it extends react component we do not need this one we had mat render in render we use return something And that's it. So let's rewrite, render, and we see that we have the same parent, parent component. In React, we created new class app, app, and it extends React component. Or let's do it. So we have a component, now we can even do this one. So we extends component, and in Class component, we already have some field state. So it means in our component, we can just assign new value, for example, state to be object. And in our component, we can output this data this name so to get access to this field we need to call this even this state so all data we are saving in state state is reserved word in uh, not reserved, it's a field what was created in property, was created in component class. And now we can output data from this. Yes, it works. So now we are inside of this class. It means we don't need to create an instance of class up because of it, it was done by React inside this part somewhere here. And also we can call the same. We have constructor. If we are using constructor, we need to call super. It will call constructor from constructor from component class. And inside we can, for example, this state, we can assign some new value. Like this. And now we can talk about forms. And using forms, I will show you function binding. What is it? And uh, how it works with classes. Forms, very important part of any web development front end. We need to some, save some data and get some data from user. To do it, we are using forms. It's a HTML tag. So it will be only a brief review of forms. If you want to get more information, I have a separate video how to use forms in React link will be in description so we have form in form we have some input type it will be text name for example first name and the placeholder put your name then we need a button to submit the data. 
button submit it's text submit by default type will be submit submit is a special type of button which is used to send data to somewhere right now we don't have field uh, not method it calls action i guess action so in react we never use this data okay so we have field put your name and for example if i, I type some name and then click submit i see my page was refreshed why it was refreshed because of when we click submit automatically as a shml works and form works in the browser form will be refreshed page will be refreshed and data will be sent somewhere to so some url we can put in the form but in react we don't want this refresh to do it we will use special actions events we have a form and we expect that somebody will press button and it will be event on click also we expect that form will be sent will be submitted and we have a specific event it calls submit on submit and when we submit this form we can do something okay so let's uh, create a function which will be called when we submit data so we have on submit it's react name react name of method submit this this we need the call function handle submit we don't have it right now let's create it's a method of our class and let's put inside the bugger just to see what we will have okay as you see again we have refresh it's not what you expected to prevent this refresh in javascript we have a specific method so when we are sending some data we automatically receive event it's event let's call it event this event will handle a lot of information and in this event we have a specific function okay, prevent prevent default it means do not use do not execute default behavior of some element as we call it from form we say form do not execute your default behavior because of we know the default behavior is uh, submit form and refresh page we don't want it as you see we didn't refresh page and now we have access to debugger we executed this line let's take a look what we have inside the event event is object and it has the next fields properties react name on submit some target some native event it's a wrapper for native javascript event as you see type is submit not on submit and we have target we will always almost always will have this field target this field shows where this event was executed in html in html we have form so as you see we have form we have action it's uh, where this data will be sent action as i mentioned before we have autocomplete it's different methods of form for example method get it means that using method get we will send data we have some name no validate 
and elements is not super interesting part we have current target the same it points to form as you see when we hover on this element it shows a shimmer element and we we have some additional information sometimes stamp default prevented it's what we said is trusted and uh, some other it's important part the next part for example when we handle submit we want to console log for example this state data what we have so it's our component it's our class and uh, as we know we have access to this data okay we prevent the data and now let's do console log this uh, state super simple yes let's refresh what we will we see we see nothing maybe we missed missed something okay let's add um, additional data log oh we forgot to submit data next submit okay and as we see we cannot read property state but why because of we have it and now we see the biggest problem or challenge with uh, classes in uh, javascript it means right now when we submitted data pointer this it was pointing not to class up it was pointing to something else for example let's console this and uh, let's take a look what where was it pointed submit we have this and it was undefined so it was pointing somewhere somewhere how to handle how to fix this problem to do it in uh, react using classes we have the next part in constructor we need to do the next one this handle submit assigned this handle submit bind this oh, looks terrible but let's take a look Does, did it help or not submit we have this and this is it already we have state so it's pointing where we need and let's try to output this state without the bugger and as you see we have data and name and channel name it how works binding but how it works what did we do here hmm in this part we say react we have method handle submit create a new method handle submit with the same name but use this method we already have and using method bind assigned state current state for example this state of this component method bind returns a new function where this will always point to, to object you are passing for example this is just object we can create a new const my state it will be object with name mm, and i can pass some other state now let's output log and we will see what we have 
I click submit and I see that for data we have name of sun and channel Python programmer girl. It means that using method bind we say use this from this class use method handle submit. In this method if we have this assign this field assign this parameter to keyword this and uh, that's it looks really ugly and not uh, not easy to understand to solve this terrible problem we can use another approach which calls arrow functions our favorite arrow functions which we covered in the previous topic event. Now we can delete. Sorry. We can delete this part with binding. And we have data and let's try state, output state. Okay. And as you see we have data name maxim and the channel name what we created is another very important part of using arrow functions. Arrow functions automatically binding a correct state for function. Easy. Now we have access to this, to this state and all other data. Okay, now we know how works binded. Now let's talk about functions a bit more. Okay, we have a method submit. And we want, for example, save some data from this field. How to do it? When we using this input type, we have method on change. When we change something, we can uh, save this data somewhere. Okay, let's first of all call some method. This handle change, for example. Let's create this method. the same event we have event when something happened we have event which says what was changed in this event let's console log event and use debugger now let's try put something we typed one letter and we see that we are inside handle change method. In event what we have? We have type change yes but what we need we need the target. Target points to specific HTML tag where this event was called from and we have value. Value m it what we typed and we have a name of this field its first name. It's what we expected. Okay and uh, based on our knowledge from destruction assignment, we can get this data by the next one, const. We need the name and we need value from event target. Okay, let's see. So as you see we have first name and we have uh, data from this field and uh, it's pretty easy how you can get access to specific data in your field. The next one we want to save this date somehow. Okay let's put this data to state. How to do it? We will use this set state method this method we have from uh, component class we extended it inherited and we need pass a new object 
So what we want to pass. We want pass first name value, for example. Let's try. And let's try it output it. First name, let's put it works. As you see, data was merged by set state. We pass only one field, but uh, other fields were not rewritten. Okay, but uh, first now we hard coded how we can uh, dynamically pass this data. For example, we can use calculated fields, what we know in React, name, and it works the same. So we have name name uh, from this target it will be first name because of we put this data here and uh, we saved it to state even let's do let's show all data we have right now we have name and channel let's type something new we have first name max okay as you see in this one method we covered the structuring assignment calculated fields for data also we can uh, use uh, spread syntax for example we want this state we can manually put state and uh, for example we can change name based on uh, this name and uh, value it will be interesting come on don't forget Okay, we have the same state, its name and channel. Now let's put something new. And as you see, this sorry state. Let's try again. Name and channel, let's put M. We see that name was changed to Maxim M and first, na na first name is M. And as you see, we automatically rewriting name, but we're doing it not very good. Okay, it was sample, but let's delete it. Okay, this approach we are using for the next important part. When we handle some data from one input, we can do it for another as well. Let's create one more input on input name will be email for example and uh, for on change we will use the same method and uh, let's put type email we have only one method let's take a look what will we have name Maxim email So as you see we created in state we have name and channel But also we created new property first name with name maxim we typed and we put email with email we used Also, if we want to follow best practices in react we need also put value this state first name yes and um,
and now it's React way. Let's refresh. Everything what we need. It uh, how we works with forms. And now we can talk about two last parts. It's uh, promises and fetch. Fetch is implementation of promises to get in data from remote server. To describe promises, they are a bit complex. Let's start from fetch. It's a great example of using these prom promises. So what does it mean? We will use uh, one a popular API, it calls uh, Star Wars API. API. For example, people, people one. For we will call this endpoint, and for people one, we will we expect to receive this data with name Luke Skywalker. For two, for example, it will be some other one. Okay, let's try. We have forms and now we can change something. For example, we do not need email. Luke Skywalker doesn't have email. We need uh, name will be user id put your user id user id so it means we need state user id on change we will save user id to state and for submit when we submit in data we want to do this call to this endpoint and uh, get user with uh, this id how to do it to do it we will use fetch fetch method we need put this url people and the id so let's use back ticks again and inside we will put this state and what we have it's user id what we are doing when we submit form with user id one for example okay we have this certification because of we need to create user id let's set by default in constructor not by default will be zero now we have user id zero let's try to put one works okay okay what we expect when we submit data we we are doing call to this endpoint and we expect to receive data what we saw how we can see this data let's try console console log will we see this data let's try one submit but what we have we have some promise and uh, status and value some response so method fetch returns a spe special data type no data type it's special class which calls promise and it has uh, some methods okay how it works we want to get data so we say fetch this data from this endpoint fetching data it takes some time because of its network this method says it promises it says i promise i will show this data when i will get them so it returns promise and we can listen this promise we wait and when we get some data 
we can output this data. But promise to handle this data, handle this promise, we need to use special method methods in this class. It's it calls then. So as we have this method, it returns instance of class promise. In this class, somewhere we have method method then. Let's say then data. Let and this method receives callback function. this case this one so we have method then it means it promise I promise when I will get this data I will call your function from then method and now we have response so let's go to network First of all, in network, we see that we had a call to Star Wars API people one, and we have some preview with data name, height, mass, and some additional information about this character, this person. Okay. Data, it returns a lot of information, information about the HTTP request, so it was URL, was it redirected, redirected, status, headers, and body. Body, it's a stream. So let's convert this data to normal readable data. So we have some response from server. Let's rename to response. And uh, we need to uh, transform this data to JSON. It's only specific of fetch. So right now we are talking about fetch. Promise it worked when we have some method what it would take some data and we want to execute something when this action was finished. We call method from then section. It means when it was successfully finished, executed, we will call this function and we will have some data. In our case, it's response for fetch. In now in fetch, when we have response, we need to transform this response to JSON and to have data. To do it, we will use our favorite arrow functions, and we will return result of method JSON. So let's it says from response, let's get JSON of your data. And it returns again promise. It means that we can use then again. And now we will have data. Submit. And as you see, we have data. My data name the same what we got from network. It how works method fetch. We first of all we say where we want to execute call. It it will be get call because of we didn't pass any additional parameters by default it will be get call. When this call will be executed it will take some time. For example if we will use network we can try to add some for example, it's slow 3G. Let's try for user 2. We will click submit. As you see, it's nothing. And it took some time. Then data was executed. And uh, let's open console. And we have C3PO. It's another person from this movie. Then 
when we got this data, we, ha we have response, we converted this response to JSON and uh, when this conver conversion was finished, we executed part of the next then and we console data what we have. But before we will finish one more issue or part. We have network. Okay, let's do online. We have user ID zero. Let's try, for example, submit with zero. And what we have, we have 404. We don't have such user. And in console, we have my data not found. When we're working with promises, we have section, additional section, it calls catch. Error, for example. When something happened, for example, we didn't uh, find this URL, it returned error, or your operation which used promises was failed, we can have we can catch this error in a specific part. It's in catch. When this error happened, promise will execute catch section. It will be rejected, it calls rejected, and it will put error to this function. It would be great to show it, but method fat it it's working a bit different. I have a specific video about method fetch, how it works and uh, how to handle this case. But for example, if you will use, for example, Axios library to get data from backend, then there in this library catch will work as you expect. And if your response will return 404, you will jump to catch section. But in Promises it works this way. Links how to use fetch and Axios you can find in the description. So that's it from this course how to use all this data from React. It was it was pretty long course, but now you know the most important and useful parts and topics from core React, which we React developers are using every day. So Thank you for watching, subscribe to my channel and soon you will have a lot more useful information.